Alors, cette année marque, c'est dur à croire, le 50e anniversaire de l'engagement de notre famille auprès de Power Corporation. En effet, c'est au printemps de 1968 que mon père est devenu l'actionnaire de contrôle de Power Corporation, dont nous avons le privilège de guider les activités depuis maintenant un demi-siècle. Cette année offre un parcours marqué par une incomparable expérience et des, des apprentissages, je crois, constructifs. Notre famille est déterminée à utiliser l'expérience tirée des 50 dernières années afin de bâtir le demi-siècle à venir. Aujourd'hui, j'aimerais partager avec vous quelques-uns des principaux apprentissages que nous avons faits au cours de ces 50 dernières années et la façon dont nous entrevoyons la poursuite du parcours de la société. Notre premier apprentissage est que la vision à long terme constitue la pierre angulaire de notre approche en matière d'investissement. Étant une société contrôlée par une famille, la vision et le processus de prise de décision de Power Corporation sont nourris par cette vision à long terme. Our family has controlling shareholders, considers itself a steward of this company and its businesses. Above and beyond the stewardship, however, we consider it our duty to grow and develop the corporation for the upcoming generations of the family and for all shareholders. This deeply held conviction has a profound influence of how we manage our businesses. We, co we focus on the sustainability of the firm. We pursue long-term strategy over chasing short-term gains. We manage with a prudent view of our business so that they prosper even in sometimes volatile environment in which they compete. We are aware that many other family controlled companies in Canada and around the world share our values and long-term approach of management. And it has been a proven approach, a successful approach. A more recent study done by the Clarkson Center for Board Effectiveness, part of Toronto, the Rossman School of Management, provides some interesting insights. The study shows that an index of the share price performance of family control corporations grew by 7.7% yearly in the 15-year period between 98 and 2012. This compares to a 6.1% of the TSX as a whole. This yearly premium of 1.6, which doesn't look like much, adds up to a 25% difference at the end of the 15-year period. So it's a lot of value that's being created. An investment of $100, in fact, in Power Corporation stock made in January 1, 1998, and I'm here use that year because of that's the study that the, the professor did this chose, um, would have yielded 303 by December uh, 31, 2012. That performance is almost, as you can see, identical to the index of the share price performance of Family Control Corporation shown in this graph on the Clarkson study. A recent study also published by the St. Clarkson Center looks at important characteristics of family control corporations. The authors examine listed companies in Canada, both family controlled and widely held, over a period of nearly 50 years. The goal was to quantify elements and factors potentially linked to corporations that adhere to long-term vision. The study arrived at three broad conclusions. First, family-controlled, listed corporations are indeed more likely to survive in the long term than non-family issuers. Working from a sample of companies that were listed in Canada in 1969, the study found that nearly 70% of family-controlled companies were still in existence 48 years later in 2017, compared to 24% of non-family issuers during the same period. Looking at corporate longevity based on average lifespan, the study confirmed the same trend. Family control corporations tend to live longer than widely held corporations. This is true in almost in most industrial sectors in Canada, but also true in the United States and the United Kingdom. The study's second conclusion, family control listed corporations experience less frequent turnover in CEO positions the non-family issues resulting 
and longer CEO tenure. I personally think, for instance, probably the most important decision any board can make is the naming of that CEO. And having that CEO being a steady person makes a huge, huge difference in the performance of the corporation. So in addition to Canada, this finding was confirmed, by the way, in the United States and the United Kingdom. This trend has been reflected at our main subsidies at Power Financial. Since its inception, I didn't name Power Corp because you know who's been there. <laughs> That's kind of easier, and the numbers are pretty long there. But at Power Financial, which is sort of interesting, since its inception in 84, Power Financial has held only three individuals uh, who served on an average of 13 uh, years with the company. Well, that says a lot, I think. The third conclusion that came out is that shareholders and family control corporations experience significantly less share price volatility than shareholders in widely held corporations. This, I think, is something that's very underestimated by a lot of people. They're always looking at the price stock saying, oh, going up, the earnings and the rest. But they forget about the volatility and the risk that you're taking to get that appreciation. And the combination of the both is, I think, what really makes a great investment. So over a 33-year period, Average annual share price volatility for Sample family control this year was 36%. This is a 15 percentage points less than widely held this year's uh, in, in the market. That's huge. These academic findings are completely consistent with Power Corporation's 50-year history and experience. Ceci soulève la question suivante. Comment une entreprise contrôlée par une famille parvient-elle a générer à la fois un rendement supérieur et une volatilité moindre de la, du coût de l'action. Alors voici euh, certaines des réponses qui résident dans le fait que les entreprises contrôlées par des familles possèdent la capacité et la marge de manœuvre nécessaire pour s'adapter au haut et au bas, au sommet et au creux, auxquels toutes les entreprises évidemment sont confrontées. Les entreprises familiales sont non seulement en mesure de s'adapter à des cycles de toutes sortes, mais elles sont aussi une réelle position d'en tirer meilleure partie. C'est d'ailleurs notre deuxième apprentissage. En tant que propriétaire investisseur à long terme, nous savons que les périodes de croissance rapide sont généralement suivies par des périodes de rationalisation et de consolidation. Nous savons également que ces périodes nous permettront de bâtir en prévision de la prochaine période de croissance rapide, du moins qu'on espère. Nos sociétés doivent donc non seulement survivre des périodes de récession et des ralentissements économiques, mais elles doivent également survivre et tirer parti des crises financières et des perturbations majeures résultant de l'évolution, par exemple en ce moment, des technologies et de la réglementation. Par conséquent, Les sociétés contrôlées par des familles mènent leurs activités et prennent des décisions en fonction d'un horizon de long terme, avec des perspectives plus larges et en adoptant des approches plus plus grandes, je crois, en matière de gestion des risques. Ces caractéristiques leur permettent de récolter les fruits d'investir et d'effectuer des changements nécessaires pour le futur dans des contextes marqués par de nombreux défis. 